Wow, I am red. I've got the heating on a bit too high and it is very warm in here. Okay, today we are on electric hookup. We're at a lovely campsite in Cornwall. If you saw my recent what I eat in a weekend, low carb camping, blah, blah, blah. If you saw that one, then you will know that one of the recipes I knocked up that weekend, which is today, which is very confusing, my brain can't cope, is a beef and ale stew in my trusty little slow cooker. Now this one is the Cookworks compact slow cooker and it's a one and a half litre. This recipe fits the one and a half litre. If obviously you're using a bigger slow cooker like the regular size one, I want to say it's three litres. I'll put it on the screen here if I'm wrong. This is a teeny weeny little dinky one that in the winter months I leave in Myrtle's boot. I take out the barbecue sadly and I put in the slow cooker instead which is you know kind of a fair swap it's a brilliant size to keep in your van i'll link to the one that i bought down downstairs i'll link to it downstairs in the description box downstairs because we're clearly upstairs now this recipe could not be simpler and to keep me on the straight and narrow it's actually a recipe that i've already made on my blog it's very 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 delicious um Oh, I haven't got the year. This is like a hundred years ago. I wrote this one on the blog. The photos were appalling. Hopefully by the, by the time you're seeing this, I'll have reshot this one and it'll all be looking scrumptious and delicious and beautiful. But honestly, those original photos were bad. So all we need is diced beef, bacon. I'm using lardons instead because that's what I had in the freezer and kind of same, same onion, garlic, a bottle of ale, and then right at the very end, some corn flour. I'm also gonna be seasoning it with salt, pepper, and maybe bovril, because you know that I like my bovril, and in a beef stew, beef and ale, like, mm, delicious. Anyway, I will taste it before I add the bovril, and then I'll adjust the recipe to add however much I think it needs. So, because I'm awesome and <clears throat> lazy, I've already chopped up all my vegetables. So look how tiny this is. Isn't that just adorable? It's so cute. So in here goes uh, one onion and also like a few cloves of garlic. How much does the recipe actually say? Like about six cloves. You see that thing there at the back? I buy those packs of frozen like ice cubes of garlic, crushed garlic. There's nothing else in it, no other ingredients. And it's a lot. I mean, that must be that's got to be a whole bulb of garlic, isn't it? A small bulb of garlic, definitely. And I just freaking love the stuff. So in something like this, I just chuck one of those cubes in. You can find them in all the supermarkets now. It's a pack about that big. And it's just like, I don't know, 15, 18 of these ice cubes of garlic. Oh, they're delicious. And it saves all that peeling. And yet you're not getting any nasty additives that you don't need to be eating, which is always good. Chuck that in your slow cooker when you can stop talking long enough to do so. Now, if I were making this at home, I would be browning my lardons and my beef. But I'm camping and I'm lazy. Did I already mention that? And I'm not going to be doing that, so... I'm going to leave that with you. If you feel that you need to brown your meat first, then please do so. However, I couldn't care less, quite frankly. When I'm camping, I just want some hot scran in my belly. Honestly, if you could see this van right now... Actually, I'm going to show you. I'm about to humiliate myself. I've only been at this campsite for like uh, uh, maybe an hour and would you look at the state of this place already? Guys, we're in chaos. Okay, that's enough humiliation for one day, I think. Oh, I do go off on tangents, have you noticed? So I've got shin of beef here and there's my bacon, 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 lardons. So I'm just going to chuck them in too. Okay, what else have we got on our list, my lovelies? We've got the beef, we've got the bacon or the lardons, we've got the onion and the garlic. Ah, the ale. So, this morning, on the way to this lovely campsite, I went to this adorable little farmer's market. Would you like to see? I told the guys at this farmer's market, this brewery was actually there with a little stall, um, and I asked them which would be the best beer for a beef and ale stew, and also which was their most popular beer, like which one are they famous for? And both answers were this one, Winter's Night, and this is by Castle Brewery, which is in Lost Withiel in Cornwall. Um, I can't really tell you if this is taste nice or not because I don't actually like the taste of beer too much. However, I do love the stuff in cooking. So let's crack this open. And then I'm just gonna pour in, 
I want the beer to come about halfway up the meat. Actually, do you want a bit of a close-up? As you can see, I'm playing around with having a real camera in here rather than shooting all of this with a GoPro. So far, it's really annoying because I keep tripping over the tripod and everything. But if you guys prefer it and if I think it looks better, then I will continue to shoot like this. Anyway, there we are. That's it. Okay, so that is now on cooking for four hours on high or six to eight hours on low if you want to go out all day and just leave it bubbling away. Just make sure it's not near anything else like curtains or frou-frou or anything. Um, give it lots of space. It will be absolutely fine, perfectly safe to leave on. These things are designed to be left on all day or all night, so don't worry about that. I've got half a bottle of beer there, which... <sighs> I can't really let it go to waste, can I? So I might sup on that. And then I'm gonna go and screw myself away in the corner of Myrtle and I've got some editing work to do and I've also got some backups to do, which I detest, which unfortunately is why I've got so many backups I now need to catch up on. So I'm gonna go and get on with that and I'll check in in a little while and see how it's looking. I think I've finished everything I wanted to do work-wise. So I'm now watching a bit of Walking Dead, some reruns, do like a bit of zombie life. And I've prepped Myrtle for the night ahead, so I've put my curtains up. i put my curtains on magnets. If you would like to see how they work, then let me know in the comments. And actually, I've been meaning to make a new set because I made these and they fitted perfectly. And then, like, after using them for about a year, I decided to wash them. And I would have thought that I would have pre-washed the fabric, but I clearly didn't because they shrunk. So I'm going to have to make another set. So do let me know in the comments if that's something you're interested in seeing. Anyway, I'm going to get these finished up and I'll see you in an hour or so. And hopefully that stew will be ready. Okay, it's all getting pretty damn delicious in here now. I'm going to pop some seasoning into the stew and I'm actually just going to use a great big dollop of bovril because it's beefy goodness and it's really salty and really delicious. So probably like a heaped teaspoon. I'll try that off to start with. If you don't have bovril or you don't like bovril or you don't know what the hell bovril is, then use salt and pepper just to give it some more flavour. And I'm also going to add some corn flour to thicken up that sauce into a lovely thick gravy. Now if you put dry corn flour into a hot stew it's just going to turn lumpy and be gross so what you need to do is take a small cup or similar and pop a teaspoon or two of corn flour in and then mix a little bit of cold water in with it and that is going to allow you then to pour that cold slurry into your stew leave it for a few minutes just to cook through and it'll be lovely and rich and creamy and thick and delicious so a little bit of corn flour in there a little bit of water don't need very much a couple of tablespoons maybe Mix that together till it's not lumpy and pour in. Simples. Now I'm going to give that a quick little stir. Pop the lid back on for another couple of minutes. Oh, I am ravenous. I can't wait to dig in. so damn good. So I hope you enjoyed today's little electric hookup slow cooker edition. I've got a couple more slow cooker recipes coming up for you soon so keep an eye out for them. I'll see you guys in the comments below and I'll catch up with you again next week. Until then, happy camping.